Lord, everybody, we're so glad you're worshiping the Lord with us today. Let's all stand all over the room and let's enter in and invite the presence of the Lord into the house today and let God just do great things. God wants to meet with us in this house. Let's meet with Him in this house today. Father, we thank you, Lord, for Sunday morning church. We thank you that we can come and we can gather in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And Lord, we know it's not by might, it's not by power, but it's by your Spirit, says the Lord. So, Lord, do what we cannot do. Lord, we're limited, but Lord, you're unlimited, God. Lord, you're all powerful and you're almighty. So have your way in this service today, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Come on, bless the Lord this morning. Let's, let's bless him. Till some have made Jesus a game that they play. To others, he's a song that they sing.
And it's no longer I who lives But Christ that lives within me Christ that lives within me Oh, from beginning to the end You deserve the glory You deserve the glory Come on, sing that And it's no longer I thankful that Christ lives within you. No weapon formed against you are going to prosper. He's my provider, my protector. He's my everything. Let's lift our hands and give Him glory. Come on, let the Spirit of the Lord just have His way today. It ain't about us. We want Him today. We want His presence today. Hallelujah.
your protector. Amen. Come on, bless the Lord. For it reaches to the God. Has God been good to anybody this morning? Amen. Why don't you take a minute before you see to shake somebody's hand, wave to them, or tell them it's good to see them in the house of the Lord as Lacey comes with the announcements today. Praise God. Hallelujah. I want to make welcome some friends of ours that uh, he plays basketball with Hudson and Fletcher and Isaac because we've got two, a couple families, but uh, this is Mateo. Stand up, Mateo. Let everybody see you. That's Hudson's buddy. They play basketball with Fletcher. And his parents are over here. Jeff and his wife are over here. We're so glad they're worshiping the Lord with us. And that makes about half my team. If we get the other four, we'll just have the whole team here. But we're glad they're here worshiping with us. And uh, all the visitors, we welcome you today. We're glad you're in the house of the Lord with us today. Amen. Praise God. It's good to be in God's house with our church family today. A few announcements. Tuesday evening, 6.30, will be the ladies' Bible study. Sister Kelly Foreman heads that up, does a wonderful job. So any ladies that are um, available on Tuesday evening, come out. It'll be in the fellowship hall next door. And you're welcome to bring friends, family, neighbors, uh, 6.30 Tuesday evening. And then Friday evening, youth group, young people, youth conference. We wait for this all year long, don't we, Bird? <laughs> and so it is a life-changing weekend for our young people. That is this Friday evening. If you are signed up and you are going, be here at 4.30, ready to go. Um, if you have any questions, you can see Levi or Ray, uh, but they've been in touch with everyone. So just make sure you're here as they've asked at 4.30. And let's be praying as a church for the group. Um, this is their first year going as youth pastors. And what you know, it's the largest group we've ever taken. So let's just pray for all the kids, and all the workers, and we're excited to hear the testimonies after this weekend. Next weekend, Saturday, March 30th, at 12 o'clock to 2 o'clock is our Easter egg hunt. Um, we will feed you lunch, and then the kids will get to hunt the eggs. 
And so come out. Um, that's ages 11 and under. And uh, so invite neighbors, friends, and come out and have fun with us right before Easter Sunday. And I failed to announce last week, I, uh, Sister Peggy asked me this morning, I said, we were just having faith that the Lord was going to provide the candy because I forgot to announce that we need your help to uh, donate candy for our children. So if you would like to bring any candy, we ask that it is individually wrapped and it's small enough to fit in the plastic eggs. Um, but you can put that in the coat closet up on the shelves and we appreciate that. And uh, just want to remind you that Easter services will be regular time in the morning. So we'll have the 9 o'clock service, the 10-15 Sunday school, and the 11-15 worship service, but no evening service on Easter Sunday. So just wanted to um, spread that word. And I just want to let you all know um, if the day is busy or um, as you see services get crowded, the 9 o'clock service is an option for you for Easter Sunday as well. Um, and it, there is such a sweet spirit in our nine o'clock services. And we appreciate all those that come out every week and um, just work for the Lord in those nine o'clock services. So um, that is always an option as well. And the church will be open tonight, as always, five o'clock, if anyone wants to come out and pray with your church family. Amen. Bring that candy. You can set it in the coat closet. If the Reese's peanut butter eggs go in the uh, offering plates, those will go to me. So... That's just a short disclaimer there. If not, they're going to go, uh, you can put the candy in the, uh, in the coat closet. We'll have a good time. Invite somebody that's not saved. Say, come out to this Easter egg hunt, and uh, we'll, we'll be able to witness to them and tell them about Jesus Christ. We're going to go to the Lord for offering. Mark and Lindy had to leave town right after the morning services. They uh, just, Mark's kind of, he needs your prayer, some things to take care of out of state. And uh, so just a lot of decisions he's got to make. Uh, keep them in your prayers. And uh, I know they would certainly appreciate it. But today we get to worship and giving. And it is a, just a joy to give what God has given us and give back a little bit to Him. So if the ushers will come, we're going to do that right now. We're going to bless the Lord in this offering and our tithes and our offering. And God will bless you so much for your giving. Uh, good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. Father, we thank you for this time of offering to give and to worship this way. And the offering, I pray a blessing uh, on each and every one of them that have some that may not today, God. Uh, and I just pray, Lord, that you would just bless your people as they give to the kingdom of God. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody says amen. Amen. darkness I belong to the light every shadow's gotta run from the fire you on the night I don't need to be afraid of a battle when I'm by your side Afraid of 
Tell the spirit of fear he's got to go. That's the power in your name. With just the mention makes way. With giants fall and strongholds break and there is healing. And that's the power that I claim. It's the same sing it but there is power in the mighty name of Jesus oh well there is power in the mighty name of Jesus but there is power in the mighty name of Jesus When we praise, the enemy scatters. You believe that this morning? Amen. When we praise. And I'm thankful the devil cannot take our praise. Amen. If you have your Bibles, turn to Proverbs chapter number 3. While you're turning there, I was walking up to mom right before service started. And she, I'm walking up to her and she said, the best looking man in the church. And I'm getting ready to say, all right. <laughs> is sitting beside me. Way to go, dad. Amen. <laughs> And there I am, puffing my chest out, getting ready for it. <laughs> and she just drops it. Praise the Lord. Amen. God been good to you today. He's been better to me than I deserve. Amen. The, the Bible says in Proverbs 3, very familiar text to you today, verse number 5. Trust in the Lord with all of your heart. Don't lean. To your own understanding. How many things God's given you or done in you in the last year that you didn't understand it with your mortal mind, but you know God was doing something. You couldn't figure it out down here. Some things we'll never figure out down here. We won't get it. But God is doing something beyond our own understanding. And it says this, In all your ways acknowledge Him and He shall direct your path. Don't lean. You lean on your own trying to figure things out. It's like a crutch that's going to be knocked out from under you and you'll end up on the ground. But you've got to trust the Lord even when you don't understand. Father, anoint this word today as we preach your gospel. Let it fall on good ground. And then Lord, let there be a, just a, a people that come to this altar and they just bear their hearts, God, and they put all their trust in you, Lord. This is a walk of faith. And move in this altar, Lord. I prayed for that all week long. Give us a wonderful altar service. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody says, I'm preaching this morning on this subject. I trust God. I just don't trust people. I have found out lately in my conversations with my wife, that I'm saying this exact phrase. I'm praying about somebody, but they're a wild card. They got free will. I trust God. I just don't trust them. Uh, I have found myself, uh, when, when my father-in-law was battling cancer, uh, th that we'd think, are they giving the right treatment? Are they doing the right thing? Is that doctor care like they should care like we care about? No, that doctor ain't going to care them like you care about them. And I'd find myself saying this again. I trust God, Lacey, but I just don't trust people. And, and some of you got children or situations that you're dealing with or, or shared custody, and, and you've said the exact same thing in your heart. You trust God. You know that God's at work. And you know that God is, is, is in control. But you just have this wild card called people that, man, if they'd straighten up their act, then God could... Re Does anybody else know what I'm talking about this morning? I trust God. I just don't trust people. And so I kind of leave it at that. I pray and I seek God. And Lord, if they'll make the right decision. And, and here's the thing. Sometimes I don't even trust myself. I'm human. 
The Bible doesn't compare us to, uh, it tells us to be bold and righteous like lions, but when we're compared to an animal in the Bible, we are compared to a sheep, the dumbest animal in the Bible. And Jesus said, all us like sheep have gone astray. We've done our own thing when we wanted to do it. We made our own decisions. We lived our own life. We were full of pride. We didn't need God. And everyone in this room has been like a sheep. And you went astray from God. And you got away from the love of God and the mercy of God. And there you just go, thinking I've got all the answers to life, only to find out that you made some, anybody else know what it's like to make some bad decisions in this house I trust God I, I, I just don't trust people I, I, I'm praying about this need and if they figure something out over here they'd be a good decision maker we wouldn't be here listen all of us have made bad decisions and wrong decisions but can I tell you the mercy and the grace of God is even bigger than my bad decisions amen uh, I, I trust God but, but then I, I I get in this no man's land because I I don't trust people and and, and their free will, their free moral agents. They're going to do what they're going to do over here. And then this one, and and, and if they really trusted God, then then they would make better decisions. And here we get to a place in our life that I've said this more and more. And I finally told Lacey the other day, I said, God's got to give us an answer on this because I can't live my whole life saying I trust God, I just don't trust people. I trust God, but I don't trust the current administration or the previous, or the previous, or the previous. I've lost my faith in people all together. I've had people say things and never come to pass. People say, oh, I'll be there, whatever you need. Okay, I actually need, you actually use them. I can't do that, man. Sorry about that. Well, you said call, if, and I've lost my faith in people. Listen, if you put your faith and confidence in people, you're going to be left a miserable person walking in defeat all the time. Because they're going to let you down. But God begin to speak to me about what, what do we do with this when we trust God, but we don't trust people. And, and say, well, you know, if God could do this, He could do it, but they're going to make a bad decision because they're free moral agents. Let me tell you this, what the Scripture said in Romans eight twenty eight. Paul said it like this. Number one, realize this. We know that all things work together for good to them that love God. To them who are called according to his purpose. Which means we understand that there is no asterisk there that says all things work together for good except for when your child or your family member or this one makes bad decision and then I'm just completely out of control then. they have, Uh-uh. It says all things work together for good for those that love God. Did I have any witnesses in the house? Oh, well, you know, if they, if they, they, no, the Bible said, Paul said it like this. All things are working for my good according to those that are called to his purpose. And so we rest in the fact that God loves you. He came into covenant with you and he will hear your prayers on behalf of his servants say he will move on you. Even when situations are out of control, out of your hands and you don't trust people, God is still in control. Do I have any witnesses? The biggest thing you've got to understand about this life when situations, because some of us like control and it bugs us to death when we're not in control and it frustrates us to no end that people are making their own silly decisions and we need control. Can I tell you this morning that we have the privilege of something called prayer and when you begin to pray as a child of God and you begin to pray as a citizen of heaven itself, when you begin to call on the name of the Lord, God can begin to work things in those people's lives lives who are making the bad decisions and the wrong decision and God can begin to move circumstances in their life and he can work it all for your good. Amen. Why? Because we understand this, that the Bible said the king's heart is in the hand of the Lord. As the rivers of water, he turns it whithersoever he will. Which means sometimes God will get a hold of your family members and those you've been praying about making the bad decision and begin to work on their heart long before they even enter a church house. God, I'm praying. My, my prayer, I trust you, I just don't trust people. 
But Lord, here's what I'm going to ask you to do. That one that's out there, and they're at the job place, and they're beyond my, they're out from under my wings. I'm asking you, Lord, to send a spirit-filled believer right beside them on the assembly line. And if I can't get to them, and they won't listen to me, I'm asking God to send the hound of heaven right there at their workplace. And although they're stubborn, God has a way of working behind the scene that we'll never even understand how great He's working. Lord, I'm praying right now all those things that you got to give your kids and say, I, I, I don't know if they're in the right situation or not. I pray and I pray and it's out of my control. Can I tell you, God is still in control and God is still on His throne. So when I pray, I pray believing, understanding. Prayer is the greatest thing I can do to shape events. Prayer is the greatest thing you can do when you feel out of control. Hallelujah. And let me tell you something. God, listen to me, church, is moving because you're a servant, a child of God. God is moving on your behalf. Sometimes He's saving people because of His covenant with you. Because you believe. Do you know, at 19 years old, I decided that I was going to do some things my own way. And this sheep just got his own little prideful streak in him. And around 19 years of old, I began to run from God and the covering that my parents had given me. And I think they understood there's something ain't like it like it used to be with EJ. And I just said, say, well, maybe I know a little bit better. And I became the sheep. And I knew my own way. And I was going to do it the way that I thought was right. And all of a sudden, I'd get out with my friends and they'd start talking. I I remember being in the car one time and we were out and we got to talking about things happening in the earth and we we're just out trying to live it up have a good time and I said guys this reminds me of the book of Revelation at any time the Lord could blow the trumpet and they all just got silent in the car and there I was with conviction all over me in the car and I said guys the, the trumpet could blow at any time couldn't it and then all of a sudden they got silent and they finally said stop saying that you're ruining our time and they're like would you be quiet but when the Holy Ghost is on you, you can't enjoy those pleasures of sin for long. And they say, shut up, EJ. Shut up. I'd get to going like a sheep, gone astray. Oh, I'd come to church. So it was expected out of me. But I had my own streak in me, going to do it my own way. I'd get out thinking I'm going to get away from God. Uh, I'm gonna, and all of a sudden, conviction. And you can't listen to me, friend. If you're in the place uh, with one foot in the world and one in, uh, foot in the church, a little bit of church on Sunday, and the world Monday through, you're going to be miserable as can be. Choose this day whom you're going to serve. But as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. But you will not be a whole or happy with one foot over here. And you'll be as miserable in here as you are out there. So why don't you just make your mind up, I'm going with Jesus. Amen. God had a way of turning things behind the scenes. In my, and why was he doing it? Because he had a covenant with my mother and my father and my, and my grandparents that prayed over their grandkids and say, Lord, and he looked on the behalf of his servant and he prayed. That's why, Sister Elaine, you're praising the Lord back there because you prayed for your family and it wasn't a year ago they came in and got saved and got back. Even when they were out in the world, God was still working in the midst. That's why Sister Phyllis was here at the 9 o'clock. For 40 years she prayed. I can't make his mind up for him. I trust you, God, but I can't make his mind up. But after 40 years of prayer, this a couple men begin to meet with Gary, and we call him Stiff, and all of a sudden conviction. He never stepped foot in this church, but conviction followed him, and the Holy Ghost got a hold of his heart. And when, hey, when no thing else would work, God always works. Amen. The Bible said it like this. Isaiah was in a mess. or The prophet Isaiah had prophesied to Hezekiah, we're in a mess. We see Sennacherib and the Assyrian army coming after me. So what do we do when the Syrian army is coming after me? They begin to pray and seek God. It was out of there. Oh, I trust you, God. But how, what are we going to do with this great army that's coming against us in the Old Testament? The Bible said, here comes that army and they're coming after the king and they're coming after Judah. And so Hezekiah begins to set a fast and he begins to pray. And see, and when I can't change people's heart, God can change people's hearts. So he fasts and he prays and he seeks God. And then the word of the prophet Isaiah came to him and he said it like this. 
Isaiah, the son of Amos, sent to Hezekiah saying, Thus says the Lord God of Israel, Because you have prayed to me against Sennacherib. Can, he says this, Because you have prayed against me, or prayed to me against Sennacherib, king of Assyria, I have heard. When you're praying, let me tell you something, God is hearing. Oh, but it's getting worse. It always does. It gets worse before it gets better to have any witnesses. It's trending in the right direction. It's looking good. Then all of a sudden, something just happens because there's a spiritual thing that's happening. But God hears you because you have prayed. And He says it like this. I will defend this city to save it for my own sake and for my servant David's sake. So what does that mean? When those kids and those loved ones are out there acting a fool like a sheep, God is saying, I hear your prayers and for my servant's sake, I'm going to do what, what I have been called to do and I'm going to reach them and I'm going to save them for my servant's sake. That's why Abraham came in a covenant and God remembered his covenant with Abraham because he was the covenant God and said, I will remember the covenant that I made. So let me tell it like this, anchor. If this becomes your thing, if you become your thing that I trust God, I just don't trust people and things that are out of my control. I don't trust them with all my heart. I trust them with him. It will become a continuous source of, of frustration in your life. You will feel overwhelmed. You will feel worried constantly. You will feel like things are completely out of your control. And you'll come to church and you'll sit there and you'll bask in it. And you'll say, well, I trust God. I just don't trust this because I'm not in control. Listen, some things you're never going to figure out in this world. Some things you're never going to have to, by, by, by your own mind, understand. But there are some things that you're going to have to lay at the feet of Jesus. And say, I don't get it. And I don't know what they're up to, but I do trust God. And I trust this, that God is working all things for my good. And so I'm simply going to trust Him. And I'm not going to let overwhelm and worry and constant fear of things that I can't change get a hold of me. I'm going to believe that God and the Holy Ghost is going to find that person and work behind the scenes. As the song says, even when I don't see it, He's working. Even when I don't feel it, He's working. So I'm going to go to the cross. I'm going to get down and I'm going to lay it at the feet of Jesus I'm not going to lean on my own understanding but I'm going to say I trust God and I trust you hear me and I trust you working even when I don't see a thing amen amen understand this this is one of my the greatest things that God showed me through this week as I'm praying it's, the Lord says speaking to me and he said you tell the people that I show up in dark places. I'm so glad that God shows up where we show up. Amen. I'm glad for the promises of God. That he shows up where two or three are gathered. That he's right here in the midst. Like last Sunday, I'm basking off that. We just got in the presence of God. I tried to dismiss a couple times. And I just felt like it was going to linger in this altar for a while. And it did. And the Lord just met with us. And we prayed and we cried. And God did more in that altar service last Sunday night. And He met with us. But, but I'm thankful that God just don't meet us right here in these places. I'm glad that God meets us outside on the job. Because you think, well, if I can get them to church on Easter, they'll get saved. No, you let the Holy Ghost start working right now. Yeah. Remember, Birch, you weren't, you didn't, when you got saved a few years ago, it was the easiest altar call I ever made in my life. You're sitting right over there with Randy, I believe. And I made the altar call. Birch comes, I said, if you need to be saved, God's dealing with your heart. Birch hops up, comes down, I need, and with tears of repentance, Birch came up here and he got saved. And I said, I went home and I feel in my weed. I said, Lord, if it's that easy every week, thank God. Can you make it that easy? Oftentimes there's a struggle. But here's what had happened. Birch was out on the job place delivering, was it rocks? And delivering some gravel to Randy. And all of a sudden, right there, off, not in the church, not in, a, not in the prayer closet, but right there, Randy said, I begin to drop the seeds about Jesus Christ. And all of a sudden, when you start talking about Jesus, he shows up. And right there, conviction began to just well up and birch and begin to tell him about Jesus. So see, things had begin to happen outside the, outside the scene. I don't want just conviction to be in here. I want conviction to be every day in our life. 
And when we made the altar, Birch came up here and he said, I want to be saved. That's me. And God gloriously saved him that day a few years ago. And thank God here he sits still on the front row. We thank God for that finished work. Well, preacher, there's, 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 I'm not, not in control. There's, there's people making bad decisions, and I'm, I'm out of control. What do I do? You understand that God shows up in dark places. The old song says God walks the dark hills. God shows up in dark places. What do you mean? There was a, my wife's grandmother, Birdie, was praying, and she was seeking God for her uh, daughter, Brenda, and Todd, and they were running from God. They knew better. They were running. And as she shared her testimony. She said, we were out doing the worldly scene, going to all the places, that, trying to get pleasure in the world. And I thank God that when they're not in here, God can, can send conviction to right where they are. They were doing the worldly scene. All of a sudden, they're just doing it. And all of a sudden, what had brought them great joy and happiness before, Brenda says, I sit in there in that old room, and there's music playing and there's all these things around and she said all of a sudden the things that brought me joy never brought me joy or happiness I was as miserable as I could be sitting right that's cause God goes in dark places she said I was sitting there and all of a sudden the smoke that used to get me that, that I didn't mind being around that atmosphere all of a sudden the smoke began to burn my eye why cause down there at Hillsboro there was a mom that was praying Lord you make them miserable God I trust you even if they're in a wrong decision even if they've gone astray God I still trust you God went in that dark place conviction all of a sudden she said Todd we gotta go we can't stay here anymore. And they got up and they left. And before they were ever saved, the Holy Ghost was finding them and bringing conviction. What are you saying, preacher? I'm telling you this. You may not understand the situation you're in and trying to figure it out in your mind. But if you'll say, God, I trust you not just a little bit, but I trust you when it's out of my control, when it's out of my hand, that you're making something happen in the darkness, even when I can't see it in the light, I'm going to trust you anyway. You watch. That's what God will do for you and your family. Amen. Amen. Listen, bad decisions abound. People make bad decisions all the time. But we have to come to the place, listen to me church, where my trust for God becomes bigger than my lack of trust in man. My trust in God becomes bigger then my lack of faith in man. We talked, and at the first service, there's a police, retired police officer. We talked about how we don't trust people. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And he said, when you're in that law enforcement, it's constant people lying to you, telling you one thing, to get out of a ticket, to get out of a mess constantly. It affects your marriage. I studied it in college. They said police officers have a very high rate of divorce. They're so jaded by the world. They don't trust anybody. Everybody they meet's lying to them. You went through that stoplight. I didn't go through that stoplight. You were here at that scene. I wasn't at that scene. And their whole life is filled with people trying to get out of trouble, lying. And so they finally get this view of the world. And it becomes a subculture in law enforcement. We don't trust anybody. We've lost our faith in anyone or anything. And so that becomes the culture. And if we're not careful, that becomes our culture. And we've lost faith in anything. But let me remind you, you two were a sheep that had went astray. You made bad decisions upon bad decisions and begat bad decisions. But God in His mercy found you where you were in the midst of your bad decision making and He saved you anyways. Amen. He went to the dark place at Walmart when it opened at 5 or 6 in the morning, 6 in the morning, when that man a few years ago was walking into Walmart, had, was hopeless as could be. And a God walked into a dark place of his soul. About, what, five years ago now? Four years ago. He said, I was going to Walmart limping. My leg was going to be later amputated. I was in a dark place. But God sent a brother at the right time at 6 in the morning to say, let me put my arm around you and tell you about Jesus. And if you don't have a church, he said, there's a church up there on Settle My Row. And if you need to talk to a pastor, here's a number. And he got my number. Why? Because our God goes into dark places. 
And God saved Ty, and the tie you see now is not the tie that I seen four years ago. In that midst of that, he didn't have no, he, I mean, he was crying on the phone. I said, he'd be weeping. I said, this man, he said, I'm lost. I'm at the end of my road. And you never know when you see that big smile, when you walk in this place that God, four years ago, walked into a dark place. Because that's what God, don't give up on your family. Don't give up on your kids. Don't give up on your loved one. God goes into dark places. Amen. They can get a song ready. I'm closing in just a minute. Listen, God has a way. I've got, so I, I, I'm just going to trust God. And I'm not going to lean to what I can figure out and what I can do. And it's good to have faith. And we try to figure out, here's what I'm going to do. And then God's going to get them ready and they'll come to this service or I'll witness to them and then they'll be saved and, and then this will happen. And th- th- then, no. you got to understand God's working and many times it's not even according to our plan. And so we gotta, what the psalm or the proverb says here, I gotta trust in the Lord with all my heart. And I can't lean on what I can figure out with my own understanding. Uh, I trust you, God, as far as you go, but they're a wild card. I think my wife's prayed that prayer about me before. I trust you, Lord, but EJ's a wild card. He's got crazy ideas all the time. You know, I trust you, God, but, but, you know, I just lost faith in things and in people. Friend, if that becomes your motto, that's going to become an excuse to keep you out of the prayer closet. I trust God. So I finally told you, didn't I? I said, I got to do something with this. I got to do something with this. I told her this, I got to do something with this. Oh, that person, oh yeah, I gave him $100. They said, preacher, we'll be there. I gave him $100, never saw him at church. I just need some money. People. And then other people, preacher, I'm in a mess. If you'll come meet with me and talk with me, I'm going to do it. I'll be there. I counsel them. Here's what you got to do. You got to go to Jesus. You got to give him everything. We're going to do it. Two months later. Other people over here with this going on in their life. Uh, Preacher, I I need to talk to you. Okay, what's going on? This is what's going on in my life. So I finally, that's been been, been some of the things. I trust God, I just don't trust people. They're going to make bad decisions all the time. I sit there when Todd was going through chemo, and we said this over and over. I trust God. I don't know if that doctor is giving him the right treatment. Frustrated. I trust God, but I don't know if God... I don't know if that doctor, if they, they, she don't care like we care. And, and so with that frustration, we can hold on to the fact that I trust God. But you know, things happen because they made mistakes and this went down that road and I just don't trust them. And some of you know exactly what I'm talking about as I preach this morning. Well, I trust God. It's just people that, that uh-uh, that's an excuse. I have to understand that as I pray that I am living in the will of God And some things that may not happen on this earth wasn't because this person did it or this person's lack of credibility or this person's lack of knowledge. It's because God is sovereign and He's still in control of all things. I said it this week to a young lady. There's a reason for this. There's a you don't see it now, but there's a great purpose in this and this failure. There's a great you don't see we don't see it now. We may never know, but there's a great purpose in this right here that only God knows right now. And so we're just going to simply trust Him with everything that's happened. You mean that, preacher? You can trust God with everything in your life. You can trust God. You can lay it at the feet of Jesus and say, I fully trust you. Because I understand that, Lord, you show up in dark places. You go to where I can't go. You begin to move hearts of people at the right time. I had a relative that said, you know, his mom was praying for him. He's in Vietnam. Bullets are flying everywhere. Ain't, ain't no more out of control than a mom feels right there at that moment. My boy is over in Vietnam. I'm completely out of control. But I'm going to pray. And that man said it like this. He said, when I got down in the foxhole, and he said there was bullets, it's like audibly and with an audible voice, I could hear my mother praying from over in the States. I heard her voice 
praying right there. You don't think you can move heaven when you pray? Moms, when you be, it may be out of your control and you can't get your hands in the situation, but when you begin to pray, God begins to dispatch things in your life and dispatch angels and dispatch them. It's not in your control. It's in His control. Pray, 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 pray. When you feel you'll use it your whole life if you stay here but if you choose to trust God it'll change your life right now today it'll change your life I trust Him in all things I can't figure it out I can't make their decisions for Him but I am going to choose to trust God Amen I understand all things why Mark had to do what he had to do and become in the situation he's in a very good friend of his years ago that worshipped right here I believe saved dad. I believe dad led the Lord. We had a prayer. I was having a prayer time for Damon. We began to pray here just a few weeks ago. God, wake Damon up. He's, he's heading down for destruction. Lord, wake him up. All of a sudden on Monday, God gave a miracle or the next day. And they said, someone went down to see Damon in North Carolina. And he opened his eyes and kind of looked and responded with his eyes. And they were able at that time to pray with him. And to call on the name of the Lord only for a short window. And then after the window was over, he went back. And I, Mark texted me earlier, they said, Damon's back on life support. It doesn't look good. And he passed away just a couple days ago. But God, I believe, gave a moment in time for somebody to go grab his hand. And feeling completely out of control to get there to North Camp. Mark said, I'd go if I could, but I can't get away right now. God sent somebody right there to that hospital room and just, uh, I believe, woke him enough that his brain was able to receive what they were saying. Then he went back into the coma and he passed away. What are you saying? I trust God uh, that God's going to get there as he sees fit and he's going to send it as he sees and he's going to move even when I, some of you need to come this morning and say, I'm just throwing my hands up saying, I I fully trust God. And I'm going to join you. Is that okay if I join you this morning? All of you that are like me. And we're going to lift our hands and repent. And we're going to repent that I've been frustrated with people. I've said, Lord, I trust you. I just don't trust people. And so I'm going to repent. And then I'm going to fully lift my hands with you. We're all going to do it together. And we're going to say, I trust you even when I don't see it, you're working. And we're going to trust you and we're not going to try to figure it out with our own understanding. We can't. But we're going to fully trust you. Let's all stand. Oh, I trust in God. My Savior, the one who will never altar and just be transparent say I need to fully put it in the Lord's hand if there's anybody else like that like me that needs to do that would you meet me around this altar this morning that's it come on and could we just together begin to put our full trust in God come on just come meet me around this altar this morning that's it anchor that's it would you just say I think I'm going to fully surrender to God and not try to figure this thing out that's it and we're going to just trust him and we're going to let him move come on meet up me me here. Let's all do it together in this house. Oh, I trust in God. And I trust in God. Hallelujah. My Savior. Come on, meet me up at this altar anchor. That's it.
God. So I lay it at your feet knowing God, you're still moving. You're still, Lord, in control. It doesn't have to do with what the doctors say or do, but it has everything to do with who you are, God. And so for that, I praise you this morning. For that, I glorify you this morning. And I fully trust you, God. Moving forward, I'm just going to put in all the joy that's going to come over my soul as I fully trust you, God. And give, just Lord, nothing comes to us just as it did Job before it first passes through the throne room. You know that. It first passed through the throne room. And though Job's wife let him down and his friends let him down, God, you never forsook him. And you were working the whole time. Let us have that trust, God. Let's sing it again. Oh, I saw the Lord and he heard and he answered. I saw the Lord and he heard good yesterday at the men's fellowship he didn't share his testimony but he was in a very bad car wreck when he was a boy he was in florida on a vacation with his family such severe uh, injuries that the doctor said well if he lives we'll see if he has any brain function or activity he might be a vegetable the rest of his life that was in florida but he had some praying folks up here in ohio he had a grandpa and grandma that were great people of faith. A mom that was full of faith. Brother Walter said, I'll eat when Tim eats. And he wakes up out of this coma. And he, how helpless you feel as a grandparent and a parent. Your son, your grandson's down there in Florida. Been in this automobile wreck. He may or may not live. If he lives, he may or may not have his brain function. But thank God, when you can't figure out your own understanding, you can trust God. They begin to pray and seek the face of God. And one morning, his grandma awoke and said, Tabitha, arise. And she said, I believe Tim's going to wake up today out of that coma. And that day in Florida, though they couldn't get down there, they couldn't get to him. God woke him up out of that coma because God is a faithful, faithful, faithful God. I don't understand it all, but I trust Him that He's working all things together for my good. Oh, hallelujah. So I'm just going to keep on praying.
Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Through it all, through it all, I've learned to trust in Jesus and I've learned to trust in God. God do what only He can do. We love you. Thank you for coming. We'll be back tonight at 6 o'clock. The Lord bless you and keep you and the Lord make His face shine upon you and be gracious to you and the Lord lift up His countenance upon you and give you peace. Be blessed. We'll see you tonight at 6.